was captured in what is called a Nazarite consecration. Consecration is actually for those who want to take a step further with God. Because the Lord instructed, he says, Say unto the children of Israel, meaning they were already children of God. Are you with me? They were Israelites. They were part of the covenant of God. And then God now said, it's not enough to be an Israelite if you want to go further with me. There is another level, another layer called the Nazarite consecration. So if any person wants to go further with God, he needs to take the Nazarite consecration as an Israelite. You see, the fact that you are just, that you are an Israelite is not enough. They said you need to take another consecration and become a Nazarite. And I will just run briefly uh, uh, to summarize what the, the Nazarite consecration is so we can go to the New Testament. There were three persons that actually had the Nazarite consecration upon their lives in the Old Testament. The first person was Samuel. The second person was Samson. And the third person is in the New Testament, John the Baptist. Are you with me? Now this consecration has about four characteristics. The first one is that it is voluntary. And you can see that in Numbers chapter 6 verse 2. is voluntary. He said if any man. If any person wants to consecrate themselves. It's something you must do voluntarily. Are you with me? Number two. Is that it's available to all, gen- to all genders. He said whether either what? Man. Or what woman so a man can have the Nazarite consecration a woman can also have the Nazarite consecration he said the third thing about the consecration in the Old Testament is that it is time bound if you follow the Bible reading he said when well, you want to bring your consecration to an end you bring this sacrifice you bring that so then it was time bound you do it for a period of time and then the fourth one is that the consecration had guidelines and instructions, restrictions. And these restrictions were in major three areas. In the things you drink. Number two, in the cutting of your hair. And then the third one is that you will not touch a dead body. It had rules. It had guidelines. It had restrictions. And so, when a man enters that Nazareth consecration, there is another level of God that he enjoys. And we could see that vividly from the life of Samson. That Samson had a very great destiny to be a deliverer. And for Samson's destiny to find expression, he needed the Nazareth word consecration. When we were in the children's church, we were told that Samson's power was was in his hair. Praise the Lord. But actually it wasn't inside his hair. Praise God. But the so some of us wanted to leave our hair bushy and say so that we would have that kind of muzzle that Samson had. But it wasn't in the hair. Praise God. The hair was just a consecration that connected him to what he needs to power his destiny. And as long as he observed those consecrations, his destiny found expression. Your destiny will find expression. I say your destiny will find expression. As long as something followed those rules, there was sufficient power for him to fulfill God's purpose for his life. God's purpose for your life will not just be fulfilled like that. There are specific things, instructions that you must embrace if it will ever see the light of day. But when Jesus came, consecration 
was not transformed and upgraded and that's what we saw in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and verse 2 praise the Lord he said brethren I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies what a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto the Lord which is your reasonable service and he said, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I need to explain to us this morning the roots, the reason, the foundation for consecration. Here he said, I beseech ye, by the mercies of God in view of what Christ has done. Do we have any other translation? He said in view of what Christ has done. In view of what God has achieved for you. In view of the transformation. Can you see? He said I appeal to you therefore brethren and beg you in view of all the mercies of God you have received. Give me your attention because we are going to pick it one after the other. He said, in view of what God has done, in view of his mercies, in view of the things he has done in your life, in view of the salvation he has given to you, some of us were not like this before. There was a way your life was designed before. There was a way you were living your life before. There were forces and bondages you found yourself under before. But Christ encountered you, changed your life, delivered you, forgave you all your sins. He paid the price of death to redeem you. And scripture says, bearing this in mind. The only reasonable response, are you following me? The only reasonable action you can carry out is to present your bodies, how talk to me, a living sacrifice. You see, the context of this presenting your body can also be connected to the issue of marriage. I can't remember, was it two years ago? 